Hi viewers, welcome to this lecture series on the Hindu view of life. And in this series, we will try to develop some understanding of thoughts of Dr. S. Radha Krishnan on Hinduism as are presented in this book, The Hindu View of Life. In reality, uh, this is not a book. We can say that it is a compilation of four of his lectures, famously called the Upton Lectures, which were delivered at Manchester College, Oxford in 1926. So, before proceeding to the lectures, let us have a peep into the life history of Dr. S. Radha Krishnan, who has been considered as one of the most profound philosophers of the 20th century. As you know, Dr. Krishnan was our first vice president and the second president, and every year we celebrate his birthday on 5th September as Teacher's Day. He completed his education at Madras Christian College in 1911. And after that, he was appointed as the assistant professor of, uh, of philosophy at Madras Presidency College. And later on, he was promoted to the professorship at University of Mysore. Students, uh, Dr. Krishnan was a great academician. He is the profound philosopher, a proficient statesman and the great learner. And for his achievements, he was awarded the highest civilian award of India, the Bharat Ratna in 1954. Dr. Krishnan was the most influential scholar of comparative religion. He provided a systematic comparison of uh, doctrines and practices of world religions and uh, he believed in Advat Vedanta. Advat Vedanta is that Brahma is the ultimate reality and uh, our Atma is one with Brahma. And this uh, phenomenal and transient, transient world which we see around us is illusory. And uh, it is an appearance of Brahma in himself. So, let us uh, move to the lecture series which were delivered by uh, Dr. Krishnan. And I would like to inform you that I have prepared uh, separate videos on, on the four chapters. Here in this video, I will try to give some introduction as well as we will discuss the first chapter of the book. So, there are four lectures in it, uh, which are titled as Religious Experience, Its Nature and Content, Conflict of Religions, The Hindu Attitude, Hindu Dharma Part 1 and Hindu Dharma Part 2. Radha Krishnan starts off as uh, by confronting the classical question of what Hinduism actually is. And he does not give any direct answer to this question. Because for him, Hinduism is not an internally recognized word. Rather, it was a name given to the subcontinent of India by the outsiders like the Persian people and the Western invaders. And they called the people who lived on the Indian side of Sindhu as Hindus. So we see that originally the term Hindu had a territorial significance. That is, it implied the residence in a well-defined geographical area. It is not a cradle term. It means that it is, does not give any statement on any religious belief. Later on, the Hindus themselves, uh, they understood the practicality of this term and they found it a workable name because despite being uh, the diversity here in this area and uh, the Hindus as such remain a distinct cultural unit. They have a common history 
common literature and common civilization. In this context, Radha Krishnan quotes Mr. Vincent Smith, who is a 19th century Irish uh, Indologist. So, Mr. Smith says, I quote here, India beyond doubt possesses a deep underlying fundamental unity, far more profound than that produced either by geographical isolation or by political superiority. And to achieve this unity, Hinduism has adopted her own measures to resolve religious and cultural conflicts. So we see that Dr. Krishnan considers Hinduism as one of the most sublime religions of the world, though the world has been slow in recognizing its importance in the development of human thought and in acknowledging its contribution in the progress of our civilization. But in the recent times, it has been gaining the attention of intellectuals world over. And he wants to say here that Hinduism is a complex religion, but it is eternal. So with that, we come to the next point says that Hinduism has survived the test of time also because of its flexibility in its attitude to the religions of the world. And he compares here the Hindu religion with the other religions of the world that the other religions, they have the fixed intellectual beliefs. And But in Hinduism, he says that Intellect is subordinated to intuition. That is the Hindu people, they rely more on intuition than the reasoning, than the intellectual ability. And here in Hinduism, experience is considered superior to dogmas. And here outer expression is subordinated to inward realization. That is the basis of Hinduism is inward realization, the experience of the soul. We can say that intuitive ability. So, Dr. Krishnan defines religion. What is religion here? What is the meaning of this term, religion? He says religion is not the acceptance of academic abstractions. It is not the celebration of ceremonies. Rather, religion is a kind of life. It is a kind of experience. It is the insight into the nature of reality, which he is uh, defined as darshana. And it is the experience of reality. So here you see that two things are important in the Hindu thought. That is, we should have insight into the reality. That is, we should be able to have intuitive abilities. And how to get this? That we should be able to experience that reality. That is, the Hindu thought relies on darshana and anbhava. Now, the question arises. What is this religious experience? As he has stressed upon the experience of reality. So what is this experience which a religious minded person has? See that experience is a, of a self-certifying character. That is again he gives a, a term here, Swata Siddha. That is it uh, proves itself. Experience is... Uh, self-certifying or it proves itself and this religious experience it rests on faith and the faith in Hinduism is different from the mechanical faith of other religions uh, which depend on authority without any solid experience. It means that Hinduism believes in a religious experience which rests on faith, whose roots are lie in faith or intuition. But the other religions like the Christianity, 
they depend on authority they do not believe in any solid personal or intuitive experience now again we have a term faith or intuition now what is this faith so here to explain the faith he once again quotes a western philosopher john wesley who was an 18th century english clergy and theologian and i quote here wesley says i quote what is faith it is the vision of the soul it is that power by which spiritual things are apprehended just as material things are apprehended by physical senses so here he says that as we visualize we comprehend we see the a physical world around us uh, through our five senses in the same manner we can have the spiritual knowledge spirit uh, we can have the visions uh, by our spirit so this is the spiritual experience or the religious experience and he further says that blind belief in dogmas is not a faith so hinduism stands in opposition to christianity which depends on dogmas and which believes in mechanical adherence to authority and absolutism without any solid experience so here we can say that dr krishnan considers hindu religion as superior to the other religions of the world now as we have said earlier that in hinduism intellect is subordinated to intuition now a doubt arises in our mind whether this religion doesn't believe in logic whether it is illogical but here again uh, dr krishnan clarifies that in hindu thought there is no breach between intellect and intuition there is uh, no bifurcation between our reason or logic and intuition he says that religion is faith or intuition where thought has to start from and to which it has to return so reason or thought and the faith or intuition they are interconnected they are not two separate in entities and uh, then he says uh, if we want to convert or transform our religious experience into reality that is if we want to uh, convert our intuitive experiences our intuitive ability into some sort of logical certainty so we will have certainly to give an intellectual account of our experience in this sense we can say radha krishnan believes in coexistence of reason and intuition he says hindu thought uh, does not mistrust reason and here he uh, give a, a reference to our vedas which are the chief sacred scriptures of hindus and he says that vedas are a living testimony to this hindu thought that uh, there is a harmonious coexistence uh, between thought and experience so he says that vedas are not dogmatic dictas that is these are not uh, prescriptive uh, proclamations rather they are the transcripts from life itself and they register the intuition of the perfected souls which are strongly endowed with the sense of reality so here uh, dr krishnan says that uh, the vedas the chief uh, uh, sacred scriptures of hindus they uh, doesn't do not uh, lay down principles uh, as undeniably 
to they are not opinionated rather these vedas they contain the spiritual experiences of the great souls of our rishis and munis who have experienced themselves and their experiences are taken from their life itself so the intuitions have a perennial value because the truth revealed in vedas are capable of being re-experienced mark these words that whatever is said whatever the truth about the word are uh, enlisted in vedas they can be re-experienced so here he compares uh, a hindu thought with scientific principles says as the scientific fundamentals or the scientific theories they can be tested whatever results we gain in uh, science in our laboratories we can test them again and again and we get the same results in the same manner the truths which are revealed in vedas these can also be re experienced and uh, there is a condition to this that is that one should observe strictly the ascertained conditions so hinduism is we can say is a living and flexible tradition and uh, unlike christian theology which is rigid and dogmatic and which believes in immediate certitude of jesus and accepts only a particular kind of religious experience hinduism is flexible and it readily admits other points of views than its own it means that in hinduism there is no one fixed uh, point of view that is why the hindu attitude to vedas is one of trust tempered by criticism this uh, sentence is of great importance that there hinduism there is uh, nothing like that the blind uh, that we have here uh, that the thoughts presented in uh, the vedas they are open to uh, our uh, criticism and they accept other ways of realizing god and other scriptures of different groups as they realized their importance for the enrichment of their thought life and development of their thoughts and talents so in hinduism we have besides vedas the epics puranas tantras sankhyas yoga pashupata vaishnavas and many more and here i should would like to quote dr radha krishnan i quote here by accepting the significance of different intuitions of reality and the different scriptures of the peoples living in india hinduism has come to be a tapestry of the most variegated tissues and almost an endless diversity of views so we can say that hinduism is not a dogmatic creed but it is a vast complex but subtly unified mass of spiritual thought and realization it is a living tradition it is scientific it is experimental and you can say that hinduism hinduism the religious experience cannot be made objective it is believed in hinduism and everyone has a different experience of what god is and has a different path to him therefore every tradition which helps man to lift his soul is held up as worthy of adherence so whatever tradition helps in our upliftment the spiritual growth of human beings we can say that we can follow it wholeheartedly therefore hinduism is not a definite dogmatic creed i once again repeat here rather it is a vast and complex mass of spiritual thought and realization now we come to the question of tradition here 
He has said that Hinduism has survived the test of time and it is not immune to changes and it has been considered since ages through tradition, logic and life. So here Radha Krishnan says, he defines tradition. What is this tradition? He says the tradition is something which is forever being worked out anew and recreated by the free activity of its follower. So tradition is not a dead thing, rather it is a growing just like the living organisms. And any tradition which does not grow, it signifies that spiritual death of its followers. So the practitioners of Hinduism, they have always experimented with new forms to develop new ideas to suit new conditions. So we can say that Hinduism is a growing tradition. But the critics have said that uh, the Hinduism is a merely a uh, flow of and strife of opinions. And uh, but Radha Krishnan refutes this charge and he says that it represents a steady growth of insight and its every form and every stage has a common background and that background lies in our Vedantas and in Vedantas there is the germinal conception of Hinduism in which the different sects of Hinduism are reconciled. So he says that Vedanta is not a religion but Vedanta is religion itself. Now, the next question is, we have talked about religious experience. Now, what is the objective or the aim of this religious experience? We can say that all religions differ in their mystical visions. That is, uh, for example, we can take the example of Christianity, which sees Trinity uh, in Father, Son and Holy Ghost. On the other hand, the Muslims, they do not believe in triune conception, but Hindu thinker does not ascribe any objective existence to subjective suggestions. Says that, Religious experience is psychologically meditated. What does it mean? That religious experience is psychologically meditated. It means that each religious genius spells out the mystery of God according to his or her own endowments, personal, racial or historical. Therefore, Hinduism believes in multiple ways of comprehending the reality. And this reality is called God. It means that Hinduism does not stick to one fixed uh, viewpoint towards the ultimate reality in the form of God. It depends on multiple experiences of different people. And it accepts all these experiences of different spiritually uplifted people. And this reality is one supreme universal spirit and Hinduism uh, believes that uh, true nature of divine is incomprehensible and it is indescribable. It is beyond the machinery of speech and sound. And Radha Krishnan so believes that uh, God can be realized through silence because uh, no speech or no symbol can define the true nature of divine reality, of the divinity of God. So, he believes that we can realize God through silent meditation, through silence. But then you will ask a question, a question pops up in our minds. That Hindu people, they have so many gods, they believe in so many gods, there is not one God. So, here he answers to this question also says that human mind cannot resign uh, in absolute silence or any sort of negative descriptions. But what does human mind crave for? 
He says that human mind craves for something definite, something limited. So, it tries to understand God in palpable terms. And because we are human beings, we are persons, we are purushas, and uh, he ascribes God a perfect personality because he is the Uttam Purusha. So therefore, this is the reason of the existence of so many gods. But all the gods are united. All the gods are the different images of that ultimate reality that is the universal soul. And he says, uh, further explains uh, this concept that uh, personality has three aspects. Personality of human beings has three aspects which includes cognition, uh, which means supreme knower or Brahma. It includes emotions, that is the great lover or Vishnu. And third is will, which is Shiva or perfect will. So, in Hindu concept, these three are not independent entities. These are not three independent centers of consciousness. Rather, these are three sides of one complex personality and these are uh, different pictures of God. G capital, these are different pictures of God prevailing in India which is manifest one or other of this uh, trinity. So we can say that Hinduism is unified. The different views of God throughout the world represent one or other aspect of the relation of the human to the divine spirit. But none of them give an, a whole truth. But uh, in Hinduism we get this whole truth and all the images of God are unified into one. Now once again a question arises, once again an allegation has been leveled against Hinduism that uh, it believes in polytheism, that is multiple gods. But here again Radha Krishna uh, clarifies that it is not polytheism because this enduring reality is one only which is Brahma or Absolute and in Hinduism the people have personal gods but the ultimate reality is only one God, that is Absolute Brahma. And it does not allow us to forget that suprapersonal character of the central reality. Now we can say that Hindu thought is not stagnant. It believes in evolution of our knowledge of God. Any idea of God is not true or false. Rather, all are manifestation of one and the same force at different levels. For a seer, it is in self, not in images. But we see that the masses in India, they are still superstitious. They are irrational. And they agree in the unsatisfactory conceptions of God. So these masses, they need to be guided towards the true nature of God. So towards the end of this first chapter, Dr. Krishnan highlights the need to educate and guide the masses towards the proper perception of a higher spiritual plan. And the responsibility of giving the direction, the spiritual direction, to these misinformed masses lies in the Hindu leaders. So he sums up that these Hindu leaders, they should convert temples and shrines into seats of learning and schools of thought. So only then the masses can be made aware about the oneness of the supreme reality of God. So with this we come to an end to this first chapter. In the next video we will discuss the second chapter. Thank you very much.